I've had OCD and anxiety since I was a child and I'm 31 now, so we're talking at least 20 years. And I would say in the past like year or maybe two, it's gotten worse. But I've finally found something that is actually helping me and when I tell you I literally just want to scream it from the rooftops, I love therapy. I'm not kidding. It's that good. So let's just get into it. Here's my experience with ERP therapy so far and why I love it so much. So ERP stands for exposure response therapy and it basically gradually exposes people to situations designed to provoke a person's obsessions in a safe environment. And then for OCD, it's also about resisting the compulsions that you would normally do. And don't get me wrong, it sucks, but I also love it. So let me actually take you back a couple of months. I used to do therapy. I've done like various rounds over the course of my life, starting when I was little, but nothing ever really stuck with me. Like it's helpful obviously to talk through things that are just going on in your life, but specifically with OCD, I never felt like I had a professional that really understood what it was, but more importantly, how to approach it. So recently, about two, three months ago, I was working with a more traditional therapist through, you know, my work's like employee assistance program. We were just doing a lot of the like typical work that therapists like to use when approaching more generalized anxiety, which I also have. So it's not to say that it wasn't useful, but when I started talking about some of the obsessions that my OCD centers around. She suggested things like filling out worksheets and just referring me to these websites where I could basically rationalize why the thing I was worried about wasn't likely to happen. But if you have OCD or know anything about it, that doesn't really help. It's just going to latch onto something else, even if convincing yourself that it's not likely um, works for a little bit. It's probably not going to be that effective long term. So to make a long story short, I went onto my insurance website and I specifically filtered for like OCD specialists, which I had done before a lot of times. And I kept finding people that charge like $300 per session because they're highly trained in OCD and how to approach therapy with it. And I, that's just not in the budget. So finally, I saw something that I had never noticed before. A website called, well, they're called NoCD, but I think the website is treatmyocd.com. And it's an online platform and an app where, you know, kind of like a lot of the major therapy, online therapy platforms these days, like BetterHelp, I've never done it, but I assume that's kind of how it is. Like there's just a bunch of therapists on there and you can meet with them virtually. But what's unique about this is that every single therapist on this platform is specifically trained in exposure response therapy and working with people who have OCD and some of the commonly like accompanying disorders. So I was like, holy shit, this is what I've been waiting for literally for 20 plus years. So I, you know, did a virtual like phone consultation. They said that, you know, this therapist is free to see me that same week or the next week. And so I, I did it and I felt just so like seen and I just knew that this was going to be different and it has been. So they also take like most major insurances. So this is all through my insurance, which, you know, if I had gone with like a, a OCD specialist just out in like the real world, they tended not to take insurance. It was all self-pay, which again, just is not possible for me. So each session I just pay like a copay, which makes it so accessible to people, not only because it's, you know, virtual, but just the financial accessibility, like has been such a game changer. Okay, so if you're curious what ERP looks like in practice, because I kind of knew about it and I knew it was like the gold standard for OCD, but I didn't really know much about that. Obviously like the first couple of sessions we did a lot of just like intake stuff, like filling out forms, questionnaires. Um, my therapist was able to diagnose me with a couple other things that can just commonly overlap with OCD. So a bit of social phobia, agoraphobia, and skin picking, like I forget, I'll put it here. And then to get started, with figuring out how we were going to use ERP for me, I basically spent a week like tracking my OCD. So the thoughts, the compulsions, like what were these thoughts and obsessions like telling me that I had to do in order to prevent the thing that I was worried about from happening? Like what was triggering me? So OCD can look so different for everybody and I didn't know until I found this website that there are so many subtypes for OCD, like 
a lot of people I feel like just know, you know, the, the contamination OCD, but what I experience at least is a lot of health focused OCD. So fearing that like I have a health problem, but that if I do these things, then I can prevent it. Also a bit of like just right OCD, which is so frustrating because it's so like vague, but just oftentimes I'll be doing something like open a door. And if it doesn't like feel right, then I would have to like do it again until it does feel right. So I encourage you to go to their website and like do more research if you want to know more about the subtypes, but that's just kind of like a couple of ways that I experience OCD. So I tracked, I tracked my stuff for like a week. It was extremely overwhelming because I was like, these things are happening like literally all day, every day. So how am I possibly going to write them down? So I just did my best. And um, then we could kind of see patterns like what was coming up frequently. And from there, we made sort of a hierarchy of which ones are extremely distressing when I get these thoughts or have to do these like, you know, compulsions and which ones are kind of lower that I would feel more confident about resisting. And once we had an idea of like at least a handful of things initially, then we were ready to start tackling them. So an example of one of my very first pieces of homework that I had to work on was whenever there's timers going on, I have to like kind of watch them and like count them in a certain way. And I felt like it was something that was more habitual and I didn't even know why I was doing it. Like I didn't it wasn't like tied to like some deep root fear of my death or somebody else's death or perfectionism or something. It was just like, I've just done that for so long. So I, you know, we practiced first on our call together, putting on a timer and then kind of like not completing the counting ritual that I had developed. And we use um, a SUDS scale. I don't remember what that stands for, but basically a distress scale. One is like, I'm chilling and 10 is like, I cannot stand this. I am jumping out of my skin with anxiety, to paraphrase. <laughs> and so, you know, maybe if I started at like a five when I was trying to resist those compulsions, then we would try to bring me down to at least half of what I started with. So in this situation, a two ideally, just by repeating it over and over and over and continually breaking the pattern that I wanted to do. And then we kind of started working up, obviously. I felt ready to start confronting some of the health OCD stuff that was, still is like kind of top of mind for me. So I had some like chest pain um, about six months ago and went to the hospital and they told me I'm fine. My doctor said I'm fine. Cardiologist said I'm fine. But it, I think that kind of like triggered something, started this new phase of an obsession with my own health. And so I am often very paranoid that that something's gonna happen or something's wrong with my heart and like I have to do these things to prevent myself from dying. <laughs> and these thoughts are with me all the time. So she was like, all right, well, basically we have to like run towards this fear. So we have to lean into like, yeah, maybe there is something wrong with your heart or like maybe you will have a heart attack. Maybe you will die. And we basically cannot control that. Like no compulsion can control that. Obviously like you can take care of yourself and do your yearly checkup. Like you can do things to take care of your health, but we're talking more about like in the sense of OCD rituals, we cannot control everything. As a first step, she had me sort of like press on the areas that normally I feel kind of pressure or like a, a pain and kind of imagine like, what would that be like? Like imagine that you're having a heart attack right now. And then I lay on the bed and piled books on to kind of simulate that feeling of pressure and just kind of sat with that for a while until my anxiety level started to come down. And then she literally, this is gonna sound so weird. She had me repeat, I'm having a heart attack and I'm going to die over and over and over and over for minutes, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is when you're just lying there being like, I'm having a heart attack, I'm going to die. And like really trying to like get in that mindset and that feeling of what if you were actually in that, in that situation. And you just do it until you actually start to get bored and, and not feel so much anxiety. And if you have any ritual that you want to be doing, like maybe in that situation, I would have wanted to like start counting something that I could see or reassuring myself. I did not know that reassurance and seeking reassurance, including all of my doctor's visits, like I've been to the doctor 
different doctors, different specialists for this and many other things. More doctors than I've ever seen probably in my life combined, only in the past year. That on top of Googling, calling my mom, asking my boyfriend like, hey, do you feel this sensation? Like one time I drank a Trader Joe's drink that I, after I took a sip, I was like, actually, I don't know if that was sealed. Was the seal broken when I bought it? And therefore like, did somebody poison it? And I literally had convinced myself so hard that I had physical sensations where I was feeling kind of like lightheaded. I was like, my throat feels weird. I drank poison and I'm going to die. And so I was trying to seek reassurance from him. I was Googling things. Those are compulsions, especially when they become so frequent and are disruptive. So that's another one that, you know, I had to resist and just sit in the di discomfort of, of being like, okay, like I have this pile of books on my chest. Like I'm, I'm imagining that I'm in that situation where I'm feeling pressure and like, I know that it's my heart and like something could happen. And it's really freaky at first to like say it out loud because part of me was like, I did not want to say it out loud because it almost felt like then I was like gonna jinx it and like invite that thing to happen. But the more that I did different exposures, the more comfortable I got. And like, I'm not done. It's only been a couple months, um, but I am feeling so much more empowered basically to tackle like the hardest ones that I've been, you know, building up to. And I've already noticed not only am I more able to like resist the thoughts and rituals that pop into my head, like one big one, like oftentimes, again, so this sounds so weird, but maybe you can relate in some way if you've experienced OCD. When I'm getting dressed, sometimes I'll like, you know, pick up a shirt, but then there's this OCD voice that's like, don't pick that one or you're gonna die today. And so I'm like, okay, well, like, obviously that's, that's totally illogical, but I'm still going to pick a different shirt because why would I like risk it? But now I'm kind of just like, okay, thought like, sure, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe I will. And then on top of that, like, I just think those thoughts are coming less frequently. So anyway, that's what my experience has been so far. I hope it's been helpful to kind of hear a firsthand account. Let me know if you can relate, which parts of this you can relate to, what has helped you with your OCD so far, if anything, and let's just share and feel heard because I think that's one of the most important things with OCD. It's so misunderstood. Like I literally didn't think that there were people who understood the types of thoughts that I was having and then you know the things that I was feeling like I had to do this is not just some crazy thing in my brain this is something that people have studied understand and can work with to help you overcome it or at least like manage it so I'll talk to you in the comments bye